Welcome back to Rive Live. Uh, very big night, of course. We've got the boys from Silverchair in all night to help uh, launch their new album, Diorama. Joining us now is the lead singer of said group. Please welcome Daniel John. <laughs> now, how are you? I'm all right. You, you going well? Yeah, I'm pretty good, actually. Yeah? got a slight arthritic problem but other than that I'm good. Now how how is how is it your legs or yeah. your knees? It's um knees mainly. It kinda it, it's kinda everywhere at different times. Depends on how I sleep or what aerobics I've been doing the day before. Aerobics? Do you do aerobics? Yeah regularly. Mornings and afternoons. Now is that is that to help uh move the bones around, help facilitate movement a bit more? Um, no, I don't really do them. <laughs> so is it just, <laughs> is it just for recreational purposes? Do you put on a headband and a leotard, a bit of flash dance? Yeah, and my friends film it and we put a soundtrack to it. And <laughs> good stuff. But you're having a good day today, because uh, I did see before the show you've got just the most kick-ass cane I've ever seen. Yeah, it's quite, it's cool. It's got an elaborate... I don't know what the, the handle's called. Is it looks it like a jester. It looks yeah. like a jester. It's a jester with a... But it's um, inside an eagle's mouth, which is quite interesting, considering it's just a cane. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever consider crutches, or is the whole thing that the cane is a really good look? Um, the cane's a better look. I've got crutches as well, but it's not as cool. <laughs> <laughs> Now, is this, is this something that, that will uh, get better with time? Is there uh, pills or anything you can take to help you out? Yeah, there's lots of pills, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets better with time. <laughs> Are you ever worried that someone's going to be there with a long lens camera through your kitchen window and there you are popping all these pills and some new scandal will start? Uh, I will be now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I've given them an idea. <laughs> Now, uh, you've been... Uh, Silverchair started when you guys were uh, around 14, 15, so that's, what, seven, eight years now? Yeah, um, we actually started... Probably, we were probably 12 years when old. When the band actually started? Yeah, me, me and Ben um, were in bands even when we were in primary school, so... But we couldn't play instruments, so we just used to rap and press, you know, on a keyboard where you've got a little demo button. Oh, yeah. It plays a little beat. And we'd press demo and then we'd quickly r run up and start busting rhymes. <laughs> Did you ever consider becoming a rap band then when you actually put the group together? No, not really. It was just we didn't have the ability to play instruments. So, <laughs> you know, I, was, I think it was the late 80s, so rap was quite big with MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice and all them people who have managed to make a good career. Now, despite, despite all this time that, you, that you've been in the industry and, and been performing, this is uh, one of, if not the first, one-on-one -on -one TV interviews that you've done. Why, why have you not really done all that much press? Um, I just get too nervous, look, my hand just shakes and I can't stop it, no matter what I do, despite the pills. <laughs> <laughs> what about alcohol, have you tried that? <laughs> no, I think alcohol uh, exacerbates the problem, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, you really <laughs> it's even worse. Paranoid and then, and then you just think that you're on top of the world and do something stupid and then all your friends tell you that was ridiculous. <laughs> So Not that that's ever happened, because I've never done this before, but no, well. I'm sure it would. Uh, so are things any easier for you now, down the track, that, uh, you know, you've, you've progressed so far now? Is it, is it a bit easier for you to get out there and, and do the promotion for an album? Yeah, I think so. It's more... Um, it's a lot more comfortable, I guess. We just wanted, on this album especially, to do what we could to expose it, because it's the kind of album, if you don't put it in people's faces, then... It, it, runs the risk of being ignored because it's not a one listen kind of album. Mm. You've really got to listen to it a few times to understand where it's going. And even then you might hate it, so... <laughs> <laughs> but this one, this is really a, a kick-ass album for you guys. I don't really... I mean, you know, sometimes I have to, I have to be complimentary to guests, but this time <laughs> I actually do mean it. Yeah. This, is a, this is a brilliant album. It's... Um, I guess it's, it's uh, not as dark with all due respect to some of the other stuff you've done, like Freak yeah. Show and an even Neon Ballroom to a certain extent. Is, is, does that um, uh, indicate uh, the way your life seems to be progressing at the moment? 
Yeah, definitely. It was um, a conscious decision to move and approach a wider colour spectrum. Whereas it's kind of, it's restricting to know that, you know, there's only black and shades of grey to work with and once you kind of overcome that reliance on depression then I think there's a lot more to work with. So what was it you were just going around all the time being really you know moody and brooding all the time and going oh well, gruff gruff no one understands me gruff gruff gruff. Yeah pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was it some kind of epiphany that you had you just wake up one morning and suddenly go hey life's good I've just changed like that or was it a series of events that got you to where you are? It was a series of events, but then it was a conscious decision to um, to write positive music in order to try and manipulate the way I was feeling. Because I think um, music is underrated in terms of how powerful it can be mm. on people's emotions. But even now, you guys are still, uh, I guess in, in industry terms, still very young. Uh, when, you, when you were starting out and you're just teenagers, is it a real uh, baptism by fire to be thrown right in the deep end of uh, the music industry? One minute, you know, you're just playing in your, in your own garage and the next day, you, you know, your first rock concert and you're the supporting act. Yeah, it was strange, actually. We literally went from the garage and we just constantly played in the garage for years and didn't even... We didn't even think we'd progress and we didn't even particularly want to until um, a neighbour, when we were about 14 years old, came in and said, there's this competition on television, your band um, wins a, a record, you get to record your song at a radio station. We thought oh, recording a song would be pretty cool. <laughs> so um, we went in the competition and somehow we won. I honestly don't know how because the demo was really... I don't, whatever. It was just, no, say, so, did it stink? Is that what you're saying? It was, was it just not terrible. The best? It was just, I don't know how we won. They must have seen something that we didn't. <laughs> so we won and we're like, okay, great. We get to record a song and we did it and did a film clip, which was unbelievable. And um, then we got a record contract and we were playing shows supporting bands that we never, you know, even imagined ourselves even meeting. We just went from a garage band to playing in workers' clubs and workers' club to us at that time was like 2,000 people. My God, <laughs> I didn't know 2,000 people existed. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what were you guys like on tour? A bunch of, you know, young teenagers on tour. Were you, you know, trashing hotel rooms or um, causing trouble? Oh, we were pretty stupid. We didn't, um, we were incredibly enthusiastic but at the same time we were incredibly confused and baffled as to people how positively people were reacting to our music <laughs> uh, we thought we'd fooled everyone we got away with something <laughs> and, uh, did you used to moon people from your tour bus is that correct ben did ben was crazy <laughs> he, just, he lost the plot we got a record deal and the next thing we were in america on a tour bus and every time you'd walk into a room ben's ass would be out there. <laughs> What's the next album cover? You never know. Well, it, it, yeah, it, I think it ended up, we replaced it with a frog. <laughs> ah, yes, of course. But it probably looks, looks exactly the same. You never know. Well, yeah, it's quite similar. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. I really don't. Well, look, thanks very much for uh, sitting down and, and having a chat. Now, you're going to head across in a second and bring this baby home with the boys again? Yeah, we'll bring this baby home. All right, rock the house like no one else can. Uh, all the best for the future. Look after yourself. Thank you. Take those pills, whatever you got to do. Keep up the aerobics. Yeah. Daniel Johns, everybody. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Fantastic. We'll be back to hear from the boys in Silver Jam.